Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana watumishi wa Mungu wapendwa wote popote pale ulipo unapofuatilia mafundisho na mafunzo ya uongozi kutoka katika kanisa la Kingdom Life Community Church ni mimi tena mchungaji Pastor JJ Kiwobele kutoka hapa Fort Worth Texas tunawakaribisha tena kwa siku nyingine leo ni siku ya Thursday November ah uh, 17 Thursday 17th we praise God for uh, another wonderful day that he has given us that we may be able to learn his word uh, nitakwenda nitaingia katika maombi kwa ajili ya kujiandaa na mafundisho ya siku ya leo karibu sana karibu sana karibu sana basi tuombe baba yetu uliye mbinguni jina lako lipewe sifa na utukufu mwingi kwa maana wewe ni baba wa wote wewe ni mungu wa wote wewe ni mfalme wa wafalme bwana mabwana tena ni Mungu naishi juu sana palipo inuka juu mbinguni baba lakini pia umechagua kuishi katikati yetu sisi wanadamu umechagua kuishi katikati yetu sisi tulio waovu tulio chini lakini kwa neema na rehema zako umemtoa mwana wako Yesu afanyike uzima na afya kwetu afanyike msamaha na ukombozi kwetu baba tunasema asante kwa kutuhamisha kutoka katika ufalme wa giza kuingia katika ufalme wa mwana wa pendo lako e bwana baba yetu na Mungu wetu sasa tunapoomba tunaomba sasa tunapoingia katika mafundisho ya siku hii ya leo yakawa wabariki watu maeneo pote pale watakapoyasikia nami Mungu kaditumie mfalme kama chombo cha kuweza kuleta mafundisho haya mfalme katika jina la Yesu Kristo ondoa kila kitu kinachotaka kuingia katikati ya mimi ninaye nena na wao wanaosikia katika jina la Yesu ondoa kila uzito katika jina la Yesu nipe wepesi nipe neema mfalme nipake mafuta yako Yehova jire katika jina la Yesu Kristo asante Mungu wa mbingu na nchi ninaomba haya yote nikiamini na kushukuru katika jina la Yesu Kristo aliye hai amen haleluya jina la Bwana libarikiwe sana na wasalimu tena katika jina la Yesu na nina kushukuru Mungu kwa kunipatia neema tena ya kuweza kusema nanyi uh, kupitia njia hii ya mafundisho kwa njia ya simu popote pale unaweza kutusikiliza na wakati wowote ule unapokuwa na mafundisho haya. Wiki iliyopita tulianza tulianza mafundisho wiki iliyopita tulianza mafundisho yanasema uh, general principles of self leadership na hii ni wiki ya pili tuko tunazungumza kuhusu mafundisho ya general principles of self leadership. Karibuni karibuni uh, wiki ya kwanza kwanza tutaongea mambo saba katika uh, kanuni za kujiongoza kujiongoza binafsi because uh, tumekuwa tukizungumza kwamba you cannot lead others hauwezi kuongoza wengine kama wewe mwenyewe uh, hauwezi kujiongoza so uh, tutaongea mambo saba na jambo la kwanza tujiongee wiki iliyopita jambo la kwanza tujiongee last week nasema tambua kusudi lako uh, katika Mungu in Kiswahili in, in English inasema discover your purpose in God uh, leo ina somo la leo la pili inasema pima kazi yako kila siku um, ili uweze kufikia malengo yako. So pima kazi yako, measure your work. Uh, wazungu wanapenda kusema what doesn't get measured doesn't get done. Yaani maana yake kile ambacho hauwezi kukipima, hauwezi kujua kama umekifanya hawa hujakifanya. Na tutaenda kuangalia katika maandiko jinsi ambavyo Mungu mwenyewe hutenda kazi kwa vipimo na kwa utaratibu with the plan with goals and deadlines. Uh, then wiki ijayo somo la tatu litakuwa ku, uh, kuwa consistent kwa Kiswahili consistent kuwa thabiti kwa kufanya mambo yanayoendana na kusudi lako. Uh, watu wengi wanajichanganya na vitu mbalimbali ambavyo Mungu hawajaita kuvifanya au havina kitu chochote cha kufanya pamoja na kile ambacho Mungu anakusudia kwa kufanya juu yao. Yesu mwenyewe alisema hivi kwamba uh, mapenzi yangu ni kufanya kazi ya baba yangu. So he was very focused on doing God's work. Ndicho ambacho Mungu alikuwa amemtumia na alikuwa amedhamiria kuweza kukitimiza. And in three years, tokea akiwa na miaka 30 mpaka 33, Yesu akafanya kusudi la baba yake na akapaa na kurudi mbinguni. Ah, uh, jambo la nne tutaangalia fanya mambo madogo madogo yanayoendana na kusudi lako kila siku. Small steps are very important. Yaani fanya vitu vidogo vidogo. Watu wengi huwa wanasubiria au wanakaa kwa muda mrefu bila kufanya kitu chochote. Wakifikiria ah siku moja nikiwa na wakati au nikiwa najisikia when I feel like doing it then I'll do it or when I'm ready to do it, you know. Uh, na, na kila mtu yuko na situation mbalimbali si maanishi kwamba kila wakati inawezekana kufanya kitu fulani lakini jitahidi kufanya vitu vidogo vidogo vinapoendana na kusudi lako kila siku uh, wazungu wanasema the best way to eat a cow is one bite at a time 
e, namna nzuri ya kuweza kumla ngombe mzima ni ni, ni, ni ni kipishi kimoja kimoja kipande kimoja kimoja kila dakika namba tano jiimarishe wekeza invest in yourself to add value that others need kwa Kiswahili kukuza thamani yako wewe ili wengine wakuhitaji na wafaidike haleluya kuza thamani yako mwenyewe this is how joseph did it in the old testament yusufu alikuza thamani yake kwanza alikuwa ni mtu mcha Mungu eh alikuwa sio mtu anayetembea katika dhambi tunajua jinsi ambavyo alitembea na Mungu hata hata alipokuwa ndani ya nyumba ya Potifa uh, akasingiziwa kwamba amebaka ame, ame la hakuwa amebaka lakini alikuwa na kitu cha kipekee ndani yake ambacho kilikuwa cha thamani eh, uwezo wa kutafsiri ndoto na kile ndo ambacho siku moja kikampelekea kukutana na wafalme so <coughs> so just you, you need to know what what is that one thing two things or three things vitu vile au vitatu ambavyo vina, vina unaweza ukashughulika navyo katika maisha yako vikakuza thamani ili uweze kuwa na uh, I mean, thamani ya wengine kukuhitaji na sio kukuhitaji ili ujisikie ujisikie wa, wa kwamba ni wa maana au ni no 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 so that wengine wafaidike fikiria kwa mfano kama kuko uko kwenye kijiji eh, na, na nisiseme kwenye kijiji hii imeshawahi kutokea kwenye airport Uh, kwenye nani kwenye ndege kwenye ndege ambapo mtu ndani ya ndege anapata heart attack and then ndani ya ndege ile wanaanza kuuliza is there any medical doctor here wanaanza kuuliza je kuna daktari yeyote huko ndani na unakuta mara nyingi at least kwa bahati nzuri pana kuepo labda na medical doctor au nurse uh, mmoja ambaye anajua mambo ya daktari sasa fikiria ndege labda ya watu tatu and then labda akakosekana nurse au akakosekana daktari what the situation would be so jimarishe katika uh, katika wewe mwenyewe binafsi don't be average be the best that you can be so uh, so that you can add value to other people na hii uh, nikimsoma Yusufu kila siku namuona ni mtu ambaye alikuwa ni mtu wa pekee kiasi kwamba akafikia ile rank ya kuwa mpili kwa mfalme wa wa pili kwa mfalme wa wa, wa Misri farao na of course Mungu mwenyewe ndo anafungua njia hizi lakini you and I wewe na mimi ndio inabidi tuweke nguvu tuweke bidii ya kuweza kufikia value ile ambayo Mungu anaitaka kama ni kuspend time in the word kama ni kuspend time in maombi kama ni kujifunza kitu fulani kama ni mazoezi ya kitu fulani whatever it needs it has to be on you it is dependent on you not god god is going to bring the opportunity and open the doors for you ah namba sita muda kuanza kusudi lako kama hujaanza ni sasa the best time to work on your purpose is today tutaangalia hiyo ah baada ya kama vipindi kama sita hivi then the cha mwisho kabisa anasema usidharau mwanzo mdogo do not despise the days of small beginnings kwa hiyo ndio hayo mambo saba ambayo tutaangalia sasa leo tutakwenda kwenye somo letu la leo um tutakwenda kwenye somo letu la leo uh, somo letu la leo linasema uh, of course tuko kwenye hii picha kubwa inasema general principles of self leadership part 2 <coughs> sorry thamani um na kichwa cha somo leo linasema pima kazi yako kila siku. What doesn't get measured doesn't get done. So tutakwenda katika kitabu cha Genesis mwanzo, kitabu cha mwanzo. Kitabu cha mwanzo tunakwenda uh, katika kitabu cha mwanzo sura ile ya kwanza. Kitabu cha mwanzo sura ya kwanza. Uh, mtasoma In fact nitasoma kitabu chote cha mwanzo ili tuweze kuelewa vizuri zaidi. So kitabu cha mwanzo sura ya kwanza mstari wa kwanza mpaka wa 31 ibilisi. Na Biblia Mungu anasema hapo mwanzo Mungu aliziumba mbingu na nchi na nchi ilikuwa ukiwa tena utupu na giza lilikuwa juu ya uso wa vilindi vya maji. Roho ya Mungu ikatulia juu ya uso wa maji. Mungu akasema iwe nuru ikawa nuru. Mungu akaiona nuru ya kuwa ni, ni ya kuwa ni njema. Mungu akatenga nuru na giza. Mungu akaiita nuru mchana na giza akaliita usiku ikawa jioni ikawa asubuhi kila siku eh, siku moja siku ya kwanza hiyo. Mungu akasema na iliwe anga katikati ya maji likayatenge maji ya maji ka, maji na maji. Mungu akalifanya anga akayatenga yale maji yaliyo juu ya anga na yale maji yaliyo chini ya anga ikawa hivyo. Mungu akaliita lile anga mbingu ikawa jioni ikawa asubuhi siku ya pili. Mungu akasema maji yaliyo chini ya mbingu na yakusanyike mahali pamoja ili pakavu paonekane ikawa hivyo. Mungu akapaita pale pakavu nchi na makusanyiko ya maji akayaita bahari. 
Mungu akaona ya kuwa ni vyema. Mungu akasema, "Nchi naitoe majani, nchi utoao mbegu na nchi wa matunda uzao matunda kwa jinsi yake ambao mbegu zake zimo ndani yake juu ya nchi ikawa hivyo." Nchi ikatoa majani, nchi utoao mbegu kwa jinsi yake na mti uzao matunda ambao mbegu zake zimo ndani yake kwa jinsi yake. Mungu akaona ya kuwa ni vyema, ikawa jioni ikawa asubuhi siku ya tatu. Mstari wa 14 Mungu akasema na iwe mianga katika anga la mbingu ili itenge kati ya mchana na usiku nayo na na iwe ndio dalili na majira ya siku na miaka tena iwe hi, ndio mianga katika anga la mbingu itie nuru juu ya nchi ikawa hivyo Mungu akafanya mianga miwili mikubwa ule mkubwa utawale mchana na ule mdogo utawale usiku akafanya na nyota pia Mungu akaiweka katika anga la mbingu itie nuru juu ya nchi na kuutawala mchana na usiku na kutenga nuru na giza Mungu akawe na kuwa ni vyema ikawa jioni ikawa asubuhi siku ya nne Mungu akasema maji na yajawe kwa wingi na kitu kiendacho chenye uhai na ndege waruke juu ya nchi katika anga la mbingu Mungu akaumba nyangumi ya kubwa na kila kiumbe chenye uhai kiendacho ambavyo maji yalijawa navyo kwa wingi kwa jinsi zao na kila ndege arukae kwa jinsi yake Mungu akaona ya kuwa ni vyema Mungu akavibarikia akisema zaini mkaongezeke mkayajaze maji ya baharini ndege na wazidi e, katika nchi ikawa jioni ikawa asubuhi siku ya tano Mungu akasema nchi na izae kiumbe hai kwa jinsi zake mnyama wa kufugwa nacho kitambaacho na wanyama wa mwitu kwa jinsi zake ikawa hivyo Mungu akafanya mnyama kwa mwitu, wa mwitu kwa jinsi zake na mnyama wa kufugwa kwa jinsi zake E, na kila kitu kitambacho juu ya nchi kwa jinsi yake Mungu akaona ya kuwa ni vyema Mungu akasema na tufanya mtu kwa mfano wetu kwa sura yetu wakatawale samaki wa baharini na ndege wa angani na wanyama na nchi yote pia na kila chenye kitamba, ki, e, chenye kitambaa kutambaa kitambacho juu ya nchi Mungu akaumba mtu kwa mfano wake kwa mfano wa Mungu alimuumba mwanamume na mwanamke aliwaumba Mungu akawabarikia Mungu akawaambia zaini mkaongezeke mkaijaze nchi na kuitiisha mkatawale samaki wa baharini na ndege wa angani na kila kiumbe chenye uhai kiendacho juu ya nchi Mungu akasema tazama nimewapa kila mtu utoao mbegu ulio juu ya uso wa nchi yote pia na kila mti ambao matunda yake yana mbegu vitakuwa ndivyo chakula chenu na chakula cha kila mnyama wa nchi na cha kila ndege wa angani na cha kila kitu kitambacho juu ya nchi chenye uhai majani yote ya miche ndio chakula chenu ikawa hivyo Mungu akaona kila kitu alichokifanya na tazama ni chema sana ikawa jioni ikawa asubuhi siku ya sita Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana So tunaona hivi kwamba Mungu <coughs> Alipoanza kuiumba dunia hii alikuwa na kazi. Alikuwa na kazi ambayo aligawa ndani ya siku sita. Na kila siku alikuwa ana namna ya kutenda kazi. He had a plan for each and every day. Uh, in fact, ukisoma katika ule mstari wa 12 Genesis chapter 1 verse 12 uh, hasa pale mwishoni inasema hivi kwamba Mungu akaona ya kuwa ni vyema. And God saw that it was good. It means that kila siku ambayo Mungu aliumba ali kitu every day that God created something he evaluated itself it, it, uh, he evaluated his creation to the point that he saw that it was good tunajua kwamba Mungu hawezi kukosea he is a perfect god every time he speaks something he speaks out of out of perfection lakini hii pia ni somo kwetu sisi kwamba God had a plan of how to create and when to create and what to begin creating kwa Mungu katika Genesis chapter 1 unaona siku zile sita anaumba kwa mpangilio fulani he is creating through a definite plan unakuta kwamba siku ya kwanza ameanza na kitu tofauti siku ya pili ya tatu ya nne na tena siku ya mwisho kabisa ya sita anakuja anamuumba mwanadamu what does this have to do with somo la leo somo la leo linasema pima kazi yako kila siku what doesn't get measured doesn't get done so Out of this uh, lesson here ni kwamba have a plan uwe na plan katika mambo yale ambayo unataka uachieve au yale mambo ambayo Mungu anakuita uwezo kuyafanya so nitasoma kwa Kiingereza kidogo katika notes zangu and then nitatafsiri so have a plan to get things done 
to get things you need to uh, I mean to get things done you need to have a plan sorry to get things done you need to have a plan god had a plan to create the world in 6 days so you should have a plan unadhani kwamba mungu asingeweza kuumba kila kitu ndani ya siku moja he's he's almighty god mungu angeweza kuumba dunia yote na wanyama angeweza kuumba uh, 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 mwanga na giza angeweza kutoa kutofautisha maji na nchi kavu kwa, kwa siku moja but he chose to do everything in six days and in each day he had a specific plan of what he wants to accomplish bwana yesu asifiwe sana so katika somo hili tunasema pima kazi yako kila siku the very first thing is have a plan Don't live without a plan. Have a plan of what you want to achieve and when you want to achieve and what is going to be number one, number two, number three. Kitu chochote ambacho utataka uanze nacho and why should you start with number one, uh, 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 number two, number three, number four, whatever, whatsoever. What, why should you go through that sequence? Tutaangalia baadaye kidogo. Uh, uh, jinsi ambapo Mungu na yeye pia alikuwa na sequence. He had a sequence. Alikuwa na vitu ambavyo alivitanguliza kabla hajamuumba mwanadamu. It is so interesting kwamba siku ya kwanza Mungu hakumuumba mwanadamu. He started with light. <laughs> Because light is the source of everything. So uh, mimi na wewe kama ambapo tumeumbwa kwa mfano wa Mungu, we need to have a plan. Kama ambavyo nasema hivi kwamba God created the, uh, the world in six days. So sh- you should also have a plan. Hallelujah. So God's plan was purposeful and sequential. Ndio hicho ninachotaka kuzungumza sasa hivi. God's plan was purposeful and sequential. Mpango wa Mungu ulikuwa na kusudi na ulikuwa una utaratibu. Hakuwa kama vile anaamka tu like okay what am I going to do today? Uh, what is it going to look like? Leo nitafanya kitu gani? Itakuweje? No 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 no. Mimi ninaamini kwamba ingawa Biblia haisemi zile siku sita katika akili ya Mungu tayari zilikuwa zimeshakushatimia and that is what division is. Vision is being able to to to, to begin day one ni kuwa na uwezo wa kuanza siku ya kwanza lakini katika akili yako na katika ufahamu wako tayari zile siku sita zote ziko kwenye kichwa chako i hope people are understanding this from the first day that god started creating the world he already saw all the six days what he is going to accomplish and what it would look like after he has accomplished kwa hiyo hata kabla hajamuumba mwanadamu amekusha kuona nyangumi tumesoma hapa mambo ya nyangumi Tume, tumesoma hapa mambo ya ndege wanauruka angani tumesoma hapa mambo ya 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 ya, ya, ya sabati tumesoma hapa mambo ya uh, uh, tumesoma hapa mambo ya akaumba miti akaumba akaumba na, na, na miche na majani god had those things in his mind before day one. so you should and that is what vision is that is one vision is leo siko nazungumzia vision siko nazungumzia vision but this is a very good point ku, 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 uh, it's a very good place to stress the importance of vision so tunapozungumzia kupima kazi yako kila siku have a plan have a plan have a plan have a plan what does not get measured doesn't get done ukisema tu anitafanya tu siku moja i will just do it you know then your leadership is weak Unakuwa ni kiongozi ambaye ni dhaifu because you cannot lead yourself and because you cannot lead yourself it is very hard to lead others. Inakuwa vigumu sana na wewe kuweza kuwaongoza watu wengine. And and this is where leadership is very uh is very interesting because leadership sio title. Kwa mfano mimi ni mchungaji uh, uh nimepewa ile title lakini uh, uh, la, ile title hainifanyi mimi kuwa kiongozi kile kinachonifanya mimi kuwa kiongozi ni mwenendo wangu na tabia yangu eh, na jinsi ninavyosimama mbele ya watu na, na Mungu ninapotembea na watu na Mungu ndipo watu wanapoanza kuangalia sasa mwenendo wangu wanaanza kuoanisha wanaanza kuambatanisha people are beginning to match my title and my character and my my life And, and that happens all over the world kila siku ukisema oh mimi ni, ni, ni pastor au oh, mimi ni evangelist au oh, mimi niko ni na ni kiongozi wa kwaya people people look at your title and then wanasubiria sasa kuona the fruits of how you lead yourself jinsi ambavyo unajiongoza mwenyewe ukiwa wewe ni mtu wa kwenda maeneo unachelewa au unafika mahali husemi umechelewa lakini husemi sorry jamani nilikuwa nilikuwa nina uh, nimekwama na hiki na hiki na hiki you do not apologize for your mistakes then there is a problem there is a problem There is a problem. Au unaonekana ni mtu ambaye hauko na na plan, you don't have a plan, you don't have a vision, you don't have a uh, utaratibu. Even your house will be in a mess. Yes. Wewe kama ni baba, ni mume, mke au ni mama, una watoto au kuna familia, you need to have this. Unatakiwa una mafundisho haya because na wewe pia uko na watu chini yako ambao lazima waongoze, labda ni watoto au 
ni ndugu zako. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. So tuangalie jinsi ambavyo Mungu alienda in sequence, alienda kwa utaratibu. So in verse 3 he creates light. Katika verse 3, katika verse 3 tunasoma pale anasema Mungu akasema iwe nuru na ikawa nuru. Why is this important? Tutaona baada it's very important. And then verse 11, ukishuka verse 11 ya Genesis chapter 1, Biblia inasema Mungu akasema nchi na itoe majani, nchi utoao mbegu na mti wa matunda uzao matunda kwa jinsi yake ambao mbegu zake zimo ndani yake juu ya nchi ikawa hivyo. Okay? And then siku nyingine niko na skip kidogo hapa niko na ruka ruka tunachagua vitu vichache then ukienda verse, verse 14 uh, mstari wa 14 inasema Mungu akasema na iwe mianga katika anga la mbingu ili itenge kati ya mchana na usiku wow and then ukiruka mstari wa 26 Mungu anasema uh, Mungu akasema na tumfanye mtu kwa mfano wetu kwa sura yetu wakatawale samaki wa baharini na ndege wa angani na wanyama na nchi yote pia na kila chenye kitambaa kitambaacho juu ya nchi So unakuta amekuwa akienda kwa utaratibu hiyo. Why is this important? Because day one God creates light. Light is the source of life. Life light is the source of life. And heat and heat eh ile joto ambayo ni muhimu kwa ajili ya mwanadamu na ni muhimu kwa ajili ya vegetation. It is important for man and vegetation. Ile 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 tunasoma katika mstari wa 11 inasema Mungu akasema na nchi itoe majani. Nchi isingeweza kuendelea kuwa na majani pasipo mwanga. As we all know from biology and zoology and all that stuff tumesoma sijui kama niko sawa but anyway, uh, mambo yote hayo tumesoma light is the source of, of, of vegetation to, to be able to, uh, to grow kama ambavyo tunajua hivi kwamba ukiweka uki, ukiweka a, a plant ukiweka mmea ukiweka a, a plant maua au kitu cha fulani ukiweka mbali na mwanga utakuta ya kwamba yale maua hayawezi haya kukua this is important so god is not just doing stuff just because he, he feels like it is fun au anafanya tu ili mdadi tu oh let me just do this no 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 he has a plan he has a plan and then vegetation is the source of food and oxygen to man <laughs> amen vegetation ukisoma ule mstari wa 11 anasema hivi kama akaomba matunda akaomba na mbegu eh, i mean akaomba matunda akaomba na uh, na miti eh na, na, na miti yote ni nini hii ni source ya chakula pamoja na oxygen to man anapofika ule mstari wa 26 anapomuumba mwanadamu he has already put everything in place for man he has already provided everything that will make man prosper Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Hallelujah. Then man was created to have dominion. Eh? Ukisoma ule mstari wa 26 anasema hivi kwamba na mkatawale. Now if God had started on day one to create man, what would man dominate? What would man rule? What would man uh, reign over? So God had to have a sequence. Ilitakiwa Mungu awe na plan, awe na mpangilio. Kwamba ikifika ile siku ya sita anapomuumba mwanadamu Anapomuumba mwanadamu anamletia tayari vitu ambavyo vitamsaidia kuishi mwanga maji chakula eh miti na miti pia tunaweza kutukatumia kujengea nyumba and so forth so what i'm trying to teach tonight is you should have a plan even if it is a simple plan you should always have a plan don't live life without a plan if you want to be a strong leader kama unataka kuwa kiongozi mzuri Uh, haijalishi kama unaongoza watu wawili watatu au unaongoza watu elfu kumi. whatever it, it is you need to have a plan so man was created to have dominion ukisoma ule mstari wa 26 anasema Mungu akasema na tumfanye mtu kwa mfano wetu kwa sura yetu wakatawale samaki wa baharini vitu ambavyo wamekwisha kuishi kutengeneza god has already created these things na ndege wa angani amekwisha kuumba hao na wanyama na nchi yote pia na kila eh, kila chenye kutambaa kitambaa hicho juu ya nchi Mungu akaumba mtu kwa mfano wake kwa mfano wa Mungu alimuumba mwanamume na mwanamke aliwaumba. Haleluya. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Na tunajua jinsi ambavyo mwanamke ndo ameumbwa kama kitu cha mwisho kabisa. She is the highest uh, 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 she is the epitome of God's creation. Maana Biblia inasema hivi kwamba akaonekana haikuonekana kitu cha kufanana na Adamu na Mungu akamuumbia mwanamke akamleta kwake. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. So uh, the whole point is have a plan have a plan. Number two, set goals. You need to set goals. Lazima uwe na malengo. Na in, in, in setting your goals, mtasema hivi, 
You need to set goals that really matter. Lazima uwe na malengo ambayo yana make sense that really matter. That really matter. They matter to you and they also matter to God and they also matter maybe to the people who are closest to you, to your family. Mfano wewe uh, ni mtu umeokoka. I don't think uh, one of your goals is to have a casino. I, I think that is out of uh, out of God's plan. Um, I believe that is not what God is calling you to do. So you need to to set goals that really really matter. So so not every goal is is important to you. Amen. Now kama mnavokumbuka last week tulizungumza about uh, uh, discover your purpose and then tukazungumza about your calling jinsi ambavyo Mungu anakuita. So your goals have to be in in accordance ziwe ziwe zinaendana na wito ambao Mungu ameweka ndani yako. Kwa sababu ukiwa na, na malengo ambayo hayaendani na kile kitu ambacho Mungu ameweka ndani yako. Last week I think tulizungumza about passion, tulizungumza about gifts and experiences. Utajikuta sio muda mrefu na yacha yale malengo because sio uh, sio kitu ambacho kiko ndani ya moyo wako kwa undani. Kwa mfano wewe labda umeitwa uh, kuwa daktari, eh, doctor eh, and, uh, and then unaanza kutafuta malengo ya kuwa businessman. I mean unaanza kuwa na malengo ambayo ni tofauti na kile ambacho kiko ndani yako. Those goals hautaenda nazo mbali sana because utafika mahali fulani hautakuwa na passion because passion is the fuel passion ndio 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 mafuta ndio mafuta ambayo yanaendesha yana engine yako yanaendesha engine yako kwa mfano uh, mimi mimi hapa pastor JJ niko passionate about uh, about preaching about, I'm also about passionate about about music so hivyo ni vitu Mungu aliviumba ndani yangu kabla sijazaliwa akaviweka ndani yangu nikianza kuwa passionate about uh, business uh, au nikiwa passionate na vitu vingine then i will not be able to go too long i will not be able to to go too far lazima nitakuwa na na, na kwama kwama amen so set goals set goals that really matter set goals that god cares about lazima uwe na malengo ambayo mungu uh, uh, anayajali so you have to spend some time in prayer you have to spend some time in god's word it it was uwezo kujua uh, what are the goals that really matter to god you need to spend some time in prayer you need to spend some time in uh, in worship in, in 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 prayer in the word of god na pia hata ku spend some time na watu wa mungu ambao mungu anasalimu na wafungua macho yao kuweza kuona kile kilichoko ndani yako sometimes there are things that are already deposited in our lives but we cannot see them as much as others can see them so, and and and, and uh, let me just say this other people will just confirm what is already new. Hawatakuja ku create kitu kipya ndani ya maisha yako. So, set goals. Set goals that really matter and set goals that God cares about. This is very very important. Tasoma kwa haraka haraka kwanza Yohana 6:38. Eh niliuzungumzia mstari huu tulipoanza Bible study ya leo jioni niliuzungumzia kuhusu Yesu. Even Jesus himself had a goal. Um Yohana mtakatifu sura ya sita mstari wa 38 Yesu anasema kwa kuwa mimi shukushuka kutoka mbinguni ili niyafanye mapenzi yangu bali mapenzi yake aliyonipeleka haleluya na mapenzi ya Mungu yalikuwa ni nini John 3:16 Yohana 3:16 kwa maana jinsi hii Mungu alipenda ulimwengu atakamtoa mwana wake pekee ili kila mwaminii asipotee bali awe na uzima wa milele hayo ndio ilikuwa mapenzi ya Mungu now the same way ambapo mapenzi ya Mungu Baba yalikuwa ndani ya moyo wake na akili ya Mungu Baba ndivyo yalivyokuwa ndani ya Mungu Mwana na Mungu Roho Mtakatifu Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana wote walikuwa wako na nia hiyo hiyo iliyo moja so na sisi tunapo set goals we have to set goals that God really cares about. If your goal is just to make money and be happy that is a too shallow goal. Hiyo 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 ni malengo ya chini sana. Kama malengo yako ni kuwa na uwezo wa kulipa rent Uh, na kuwa na gari nzuri na watoto kwenda shule college nzuri waje wa, wa, wafanikiwe maisha yao malengo hayo ni chini sana those are two two small goals you need to have very divine goals because unapomtafuta Mungu unapofanya makusudi ya Mungu as 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 as, as Matthew 6:33 inavyosema utafuteni kwanza ufanye wa Mungu na haki yake na hayo mengine yote mtafanya mtazidishiwa so obviously as you seek God some things will begin to happen in your life that you didn't even ask for na sina maana kwamba usifanye kazi au au usiona ndio hicho tunazungumza hapa you need to have a goal and you need to have, to have a plan if you need to have a business have a business if you need to work work if you need to do something do it whatever it is 
no matter how small it is. Amen. So tusome pia mstari mwingine wa Filipi 3:14. Philippians chapter 3 verse 14. Philippians chapter 3 verse 14. Wa Filipi 3:14. Neno la Mungu linasema hivi, na kaza mwendo ili eh, niifikirie mede ya thawabu ya mwito mkuu wa Mungu katika Kristo. So pet Uh, 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 Paulo mtume Paulo amefikia mwisho wa maisha yake na anaandika hizi barua akiwa kifungoni anajua kwamba hata toka mzima he will uh, eventually die he will eventually be killed lakini anasema hivi kwamba nakaza mwendo eh, ni fikirie mede ya thawabu goal yake tayari ni kwamba aweze kufikiria kuifikiria mede, mede ni kama ni kama ni kama tuzo it's, it's like um, it's like a, an award eh? Eh, ni, niweze kuifikiria ile thawabu ya mwito mkuu wa Mungu katika Kristo Yesu. He, he saw his call in Jesus. Ye, Paulo alipoangalia aliona wito wake na maisha yake yote aliyaona ndani ya Mungu. So hii napenda kukutia moyo hasa sisi viongozi wa Kikristo. See your calling and see your goals. See your goals and your plans in Christ. Ona mipango yako na maisha yako yote ndani ya Kristo. Haleluya ndani ya Kristo ndani ya Kristo ndani ya Kristo that is how you're going to be successful in all areas of your life as you see your plans and everything around Christ then everything else is going to work for you Namba la tatu tunataka tumzungumze leo na jambo la mwisho set deadlines la kwanza tumezungumza have a plan ya pili tumezungumza set goals and those goals should really matter sio tu vitu visio na maana set goals that God cares about Uh, namba ya mwisho set deadlines deadlines maana yake ni uh, uh, by this time maana yake kwamba ukipita miezi miwili ndio nimefanya hivi ukipita miezi minne ndio nimefanya hivi ukipita miezi kumi ukipita miaka mitano niwe nimefanya hivi now katika mithali i think ni mithali 16 Yesu Mungu anasema hivi kwamba nani uh, Uh, the, the plans of a man's uh, ha, uh, uh, heart are many but the, the answer comes from the lord maana kile kwamba mipango ya mwanadamu ni mingi lakini jawabu linatoka kwa Mungu meaning that uh, meaning that kwamba you have a place to plan wengine huwa wana kushindwa kuelewa mstari ule you have a place to plan and especially kwa wewe moyo wako umeambatana na roho mtakatifu mara nyingi as you are planning you are also planning in the holy ghost hallelujah kuna muda ambapo una plan unadhania una plan wewe tu lakini kwa sababu umeambatana sana na roho wa Mungu umeambatana sana na makusudi ya Mungu you are really planning in the holy spirit you don't even realize it so don't worry usio na wasiwasi kwamba oh labda itakuwa mipango yangu tu na sio mipango ya Mungu kama you have put your, yourself to god okay umejiweka wewe upande wa Mungu as you are planning the holy spirit will not just leave you to plan kijinga kijinga au kuplan vile ambavyo yeye hajakusudia So what I'm trying to say is set deadlines set deadlines set mwisho na mipaka ya kila jambo because this is where the enemy hits us very hard hapo ndio ambapo shetani anahakikisha atufanikiwe kwamba unaweza ukaweka kitu kwenye karatasi ukakiandika but it will never come to happen kwamba unaweza ukaliombea jambo for 10 years and never do it kwamba unaweza ukashare na watu ukaenda kwenye seminar of how to do this ukaenda kwenye conference of how to cook how to uh, how to uh, uh, lead worship or how to uh, to preach how to do this and that utaenda ma conference yote but hatakuna hata siku moja ambayo you are beginning to do something and you are ending it you are ending it because it is also the tactic of the enemy to uh, <clears throat> so set a deadline because um, this is how life is maisha katika mwili yako timed eh kuna clock Uh, wengine labda mko na miaka 20, wengine mko na miaka 30, wengine 40, uh, and so forth. Kwa hiyo uko uko on a clock, uko on a clock. Kila siku unapoamka ile clock inazidi kwenda minus, inazidi kwenda chini, haikuongezei hai muda. And because of that, God has also put his eternal goals, ameweka vitu vya kimilele na vitu vizuri katika ule ule muda uliopewa. Kama umepewa miaka 30, God has put a lot of great things in those 30 years for your life but it, it will take you itakuchukua wewe to know how to use that those 30 years that god has given you au kama ni miaka 70 mungu amekupa you it will take you to know how to use those 70 years because na shetani naye atakuwa anavuta upande wake akihakikisha kwamba ile miaka 
au hamsini au mia moja ambayo utaishi hapa duniani inaenda bure and especially kama ni mtu wa Mungu the enemy will make sure that your impact is not felt <laughs> by the time you leave this world your impact never went anywhere because every time you have impact katika Mungu the enemy is suffering kila wakati ambapo unakuwa na impact kubwa kwa ajili ya Mungu the enemy is suffering ufalme wake unaangushwa Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana haleluya nitakwenda kusoma katika kitabu cha mhubiri ile sura ya tatu na mstari wa kwanza Muhubiri sura ya tatu mstari wa kwanza. Muhubiri sura ya tatu mstari wa kwanza. Biblia inasema kwa kila jambo kuna majira yake na wakati kwa kila kusudi chini ya mbingu. Huu mstari tunaofahamu sana. Wakati wa kuzaliwa na wakati wa kufa, wakati wa kupanda na wakati wa kungoa yaliyopandwa. So if you have a, if, if you have a plan, if you have a goals that you want to 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 achieve, then you should know majira ya kila jambo ambalo unatakiwa kufanya like if this is the time you need to go to school go to school if it is two years from now then it is two years from now kama ni miaka mitano from now then ni miaka mitano from now kama ni kitu kingine if this is the time to have a marriage to be married then this is the time if this is the time to have children na Mungu amekufungulia milango that is it if this is the time to preach this is the time to preach if this is the time to invest This is the time to invest. Kama uni muda wa kufunga, God is calling you maybe to fast every week unafunga siku mbili, 48 hours, kuna kitu ambacho anataka kufanya, then you just have to be obedient. Hawezi kaanza kusema, "Oh, well, uh, nikiangalia my schedule, it doesn't really look like uh, no 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 no. You will have to be obedient." And I'll say why? Because kuna kuna when it comes to time, kuna vitu viwili, kuna kuna maneno mawili ya Kigreek yanatumika. Kuna neno la kwanza Kairos. Now Chronos is chronological time. Chronos, Chronos K R O N O S. Chronos ni chronological time. Chronological time ni hii time ambayo tunayo ya masai 24. Okay? And then Kairos ni appointed time in God. Ukisoma katika Wagalatia Mungu anasema when the fullness of time had fully come, God sent his son born of a woman. Wakati ulio Mungu ulipotimia Mungu akamtuma mwana wake aliyezaliwa na mwanamke. When the appointed time was there and set and ready, Jesus came into the world. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Now mara nyingi Chronos has to work with Kairos. Chronos has to work with Kairos. But the most important is your Kairos. Is your Kairos. Meaning that kama Mungu anakuita kwamba uanze kufunga masaa 12 every week for three months kwa sababu kuna kitu fulani anataka kufanya, sometimes your Chronos does not agree with your Kairos. <laughs> Sometimes ile Kronos Kairos yako ile ambayo Mungu anakuambia okay this is the time to do this this is the time to do this huu ndo wakati wa kufanya hivi huu ndo wakati wa kufanya hivi wakati mwingine haiendani na ile Kronos yako unaweza kujiona ah niko tired busy niko tired nina vitu 20 ninatakiwa kufanya kama uko if you are too busy look at the things that you are doing kama uko unafanya vitu mia mbili unafanya vitu mia moja then it is time to look at the things that really matter to your calling ni wakati wa kuangalia vitu gani ambavyo kweli Mungu ameniita kufanya. Je, kuna vitu vingine ambavyo watu wengine wanaweza kufanya? Je, kuna vitu gani ambavyo lazima nifanye mimi mwenyewe? Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Haleluya. Mistari mingine ambayo unaweza kujisomea nyumbani ni Proverbs 12:11 kama unaandika mahali ni Proverbs 12:11 and then Proverbs 13:4. Verse Proverbs 13:4. Verse Proverbs 13 verse 4 Amen Amen So uh, leo tumezungumza mambo matatu juu ya kupima kazi yako kila siku Namba moja you need to have a plan Namba mbili you need to set goals uwe na malengo Namba tatu you should set deadlines bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. And konye hii kuset deadlines um, ninajua mtu ambaye yeye ana set deadline mbili. Ana set deadline ile ambaye anataka kutimiza jambo fulani lakini ana set deadline nyingine kabla. They set a deadline before a deadline. I know some people who do that. 
so that by that way wanaweza waka wakatimiza mambo mengi zaidi jina la bwana libarikiwe uh, tutakwenda kumshukuru Mungu kwa neno lake na kisha tutafungua line hizi kama kuna swali au kuna any comment anything people need to add uh, let me say this uh, i would really encourage people to uh, to uh, to conversate uh, kama kuna kitu unapenda kushare please you're welcome uh, siku hapa tu kusema kile ambacho mimi tu labda najua you know uh, we are all learning from each other na kama kuna kitu kiko kabisa ndani ya moyo wako are you are really really welcome to speak especially kama kiko katika maeneo hayo tunazungumza katika bible study